Welcome to Intuitive Astrology with Molly McCord. Thank you so much for joining me today as in today's podcast episode, we're going to take a look at the energies and themes of Saturn retrograde in Aquarius, which officially began June 4th at 25 degrees of Aquarius and will last until October 23rd, 2022, as Saturn voyages back to 18 degrees of Aquarius. So in your natal astrology chart, you want to identify which house or houses you have 18 to 25 degrees of Aquarius, as this is the territory where Saturn will be supporting you in revisiting, reconsidering, reprioritizing, and re-examining the areas in your life where you maybe have made decisions, choices, obligations, commitments, and reassess what is true for you. Deeply consider if this energy is in alignment or where you're ready to remove. And that is something that Saturn retrograde often brings up for us, where if we took on too much, if we have too many commitments, if there's too much on our plate or on our desks, too much even in our energies, Saturn retrograde helps us in determining what new boundaries we need that are better for our energy, better for our needs, and ultimately support what our true priorities are. So we'll talk about this and even more in today's podcast episode. For those who listen to this podcast regularly, welcome back. Thank you for joining me and making time in your day for this information. And those of you who are new to this podcast, welcome. You'll find that on Monday episodes, we talk about a particular astrological theme and dig into it at a more deep deeper level and understanding. And then the Wednesday episodes focus on the transiting energies of the week and what we're presently moving through. As we go through information, I always like to direct you back to your natal astrology chart so you can look at what energies and themes are coming up for you. And of course, give you a heads up on what those potentials might be so that you can be in your power, in your light, in your sense of this is the right choice for me and act with greater consciousness, especially around the life that you are experiencing and what you are building for yourself. Saturn is the planet connected to our real world experiences. It's about the physical world. It's about what we're actually doing in a day, the energies that we are managing, what we are committed to and taking on. Saturn is an energy of maturity and responsibility. So understanding that we are being required often to step up and show up with Saturn, where when you have a commitment at work, you have to step up and show up for that duty or obligation. If there's things in your life that you need to take care of, Saturn is the energy of being able to understand what is necessary, what is essential, and then allowing the rest to be cut out or removed. So Saturn really connects us to what we're building in our lives, how we are experiencing what we've built, and understanding that the physical world is where our energy is grounded. So here we are on this earth plane in our physical bodies, living in a very 3D world, while also further integrating more of these higher energies. And I feel like that is one of the strong themes of Saturn's journey through Aquarius. Aquarius is the energy of where we're going, the future, the vision, what inspires us to keep moving forward. Aquarius is a fixed air sign that gives us a sense of stability for what we are focused on, whether that is a vision, an idea, a concept, And the Aquarius energy is connected to many, many themes in astrology, as every astrological sign is. But Aquarius is also revealing to us more of the energies that you uniquely embody, of what your frequency is, what your individual gifts are in this lifetime, what makes you unique and different, and how you're honoring that in yourself. So Saturn in Aquarius is connecting us to more of our individual energy fields, 
our own sense of sovereignty, our ability to stand in who we are, to understand that we're meant to be different from the person to our left and the person to our right, that we're meant to understand that that's exactly what's needed in the collective. And Aquarius is also the collective energy fields. We typically think of it as groups, networks, tribes. Aquarius is about humanity and communities. But all of that energy is based on how we individually know ourselves and bring those parts of ourselves out into a community or into a collective energy. So Aquarius is this interesting dichotomy between bigger groups, but also what that means for you at a personal level, how your energy is connected to humanity, how your energy is meant to be different. That's exactly what we need at this time. And that's what takes us forward. So Aquarius is an energy of where we're going, but there needs to be that acceptance of how you're different, how you're special, how you're unique, and understanding that that's actually what supports the common and good even more, that it isn't about being a cookie cutter. And I feel like that's part of the Aquarius journey, whether you have planets in Aquarius in your chart or you're studying astrology and you're just learning more about these archetypal energies, is that Aquarius is also associated with groups and gatherings and the collective energies, as I said. But what we're really getting to the heart of is that we are deconditioning where we thought we had to blend in with the crowd. We are looking at where we've been programmed to be a certain way, to fit in. In, to follow the rules, to understand that we need you to stand in line and be a part of this classroom or be a part of this group environment. And that is very Aquarian. But what we're moving through at a bigger scale, especially with the incoming age of Aquarius waves of energy, is how we can feel safe confident and secure to step away from those molds, to not think we have to be a certain way, or that we have to embody a similar frequency or follow a set path. And this is part of the overarching Age of Aquarius themes. Now, these Age of Aquarius energies are coming in in waves, and they're coming through the outer planets. And we can look back to when Uranus was in Aquarius from about 1995 to 2003. Then we had Neptune in Aquarius, from around 1998 until 2012. Then we saw both Jupiter and Saturn enter Aquarius together in December 2020. Jupiter then moved on and entered Pisces, but we still have Saturn in Aquarius until March 2023. And then also in 2023, we will see Pluto enter Aquarius. And that is always significant when Pluto changes astrological signs. So you can see that you've been moving through these waves of Aquarius energies through the outer planets, which is always significant and influential. Since the outer planets connect us with a higher consciousness, bigger energies, more significant life events and life changes, more that comes to our awareness around how we're using our energy, and then of course highlighting more of these Aquarian themes. So this is a time when we are really understanding more about who we are as individuals, how that's needed at this time on the planet. And with the Saturn energy, it's the reality check of how the energies are showing up, how we're being responsible with ourselves, with our individual energies, how we're applying it. And this, of course, brings in the world of metaphysics, understanding more of your unique energy, which is one of the gifts of astrology, of human design, of many different energy systems that specifically pinpoint more of who you are. And this is where we're also now fully stepping into our energetic power, more of our sovereignty, more of our sense of self, and also connecting it to what that means in this lifetime. And you could look at it as how we are a more conscious population than ever before in the history of humanity. And what are we doing with that? 
And yet that does come down to our individual energy fields. That comes down to knowing yourself, knowing how you run energy, which is the movement of energy through you, understanding how you experience energy, how that is helping to shape your life, your decisions, your behavior, your actions, your sense of knowing yourself, and then really applying it. So for example, not only is this about understanding your astrological blueprint and that energy signature, but it's a wonderful gift to combine it with your human design which takes you even further into your individual energy, what that means, what your decision-making strategy is, for example, through human design, as every human design type has a particular decision-making strategy that honors your energy and helps you tune in to what is best for you, while also supporting you in living through a strategy that works through your energy. So for those of you who are aware of human design, you're familiar with this language. If you're not familiar with human design or it's new to you, you can get a free chart over at jovianarchive.com, J-O-V-I-A-N archive.com and begin a journey into the world and rabbit hole of human design. And similar to astrology, it starts out broad and becomes much more specific, especially as you understand more of the layers of energies that's connected to your human design chart. So all of this is very Aquarius. And then we pull in the Saturn energies of responsibility to your energy, responsibility to your individuality, understanding what that really looks like for you in your life. And during this retrograde phase where Saturn is in retrograde from June until October 2022, there's possibilities and opportunities here to deeply review, to slow down, to pull energy back into yourself, ground it in, and really connect to more of your unique frequency, more of your sovereign choices, and more of what you really want to experience in this lifetime. Saturn wants us to build, to be successful, to feel strong and secure in who we are. Saturn is about achievement and recognition. It's about setting a goal for yourself, achieving that goal, feeling good about achieving that goal, then moving on to what's next, to what calls to you to move forward. Saturn connects us to the present moment and the energies that we're feeling in this physical reality. Since Saturn is very much about being grounded and clear in what is happening within us, Saturn brings us into that present moment to check in with ourselves. So during a Saturn retrograde, you could be further checking in with yourself by going deeper into yourself. And I see this as a retraction or pulling back into yourself. Maybe it's going into hermit mode. Maybe there's something here that you're now connecting to on a bigger scale, which is Aquarius, where now you're seeing something in a new light or from a new perspective that has expanded and widened the scope of what is possible, what you want, what you're creating. Similar to expanding the lens on a camera, where maybe it helps with a more panoramic view, there's more that we can take in with Aquarius. And then Saturn brings you into, well, what are your choices around this? What can you truly honor? Where are you ready to understand your commitments, what you've already said yes to, or what you already have to take care of? And then truly reassessing this with greater consciousness. So Saturn retrograde not only retracts our energies and pulls us back into ourselves, we then are reconsidering, reconsidering what we have in front of us and to really assess, do I have time for this? Do I have energy for this? Is this what I want? Does this fit in that broader panoramic view of my life? Does this connect to my unique energy? Big questions, bigger questions deeper questions so that you can remain in alignment with yourself and stay focused on what is essential. Saturn is about that focus and it's also about the realistic assessment of what you can do in a day. Saturn is a timekeeper. Saturn is the energy of you only have so much you can do in a day, so what are you directing your energy towards? 
And because of this, because we only have so much capacity, Saturn also supports us in establishing boundaries that honor our time and what we need as well as what we don't need. So this is where we step into that more empowered adult mature energy of understanding that what can you do in a day that matters versus what is frivolous, what no longer connects, what is no longer a part of your individual energy. And Saturn will support you in being clear first with yourself so that you can then be clear with others. And when this awareness arises in you, that's where we then take new information and new messages out to people and say, you know, I've been thinking about this. I've been sitting with it. I've been reconsidering it. And I realized I just can't go through with this at this time. I'm not able to take this on. I don't have room on my plate for more. Saturn will help you with that ability to communicate your boundaries from a place of authenticity, from a place of personal ownership that helps you understand where your energy is being purposeful, focused, and on point versus where your energy feels too scattered, overwhelmed, overcommitted, or split. Because Saturn is about our goals, about what we're building and creating, we can be reassessing the path we're taking up the mountain. We could be reassessing where we're going, what we want, and really evaluating, is this still a goal I want? Is this still a priority? Does this still matter to me? And there can be messages around this that even surprise you. So during this particular Saturn retrograde between 25 degrees of Aquarius back to 18 degrees of Aquarius, Saturn is covering the territory that first began at 18 degrees of Aquarius in late February 2022. That's when Saturn first reached 18 degrees and then went to 25 degrees in early June 2022. So these are the months of time that we're reviewing during the Saturn retrograde. We're looking at our decisions, responsibilities, what we have on our plate, what's in front of us. And now we're going to have an opportunity to rework, reprioritize, and reconsider if that is truly something you want to further commit to and move forward, or if there's energies here that now your understanding are not a fit and are not true for you. Since Saturn is a timekeeper, and understands that we only have so much time in the day, we look at what does this mean to me in my life? Is this something I want to take further? Is this energy I want to further be responsible for? Or am I understanding now that this maybe isn't the direction I wanna go? This maybe isn't where I wanna be headed, And in fact, there could be something coming up for you around how you say yes or how you make commitments to others that aren't really honoring who you are and what you need. Aquarius is about other people. And as I mentioned, it is about groups and networks and friendships and acquaintances. It's about the people we know in the world. It involves social media. It involves the internet. It involves the information at large that we can access and understand. It's about a collective knowledge base and how that knowledge is shared. I have two other podcast episodes for you that are about Saturn and Aquarius themes. There's a part one and a part two, and that goes further into the Aquarius energies that Saturn is working with more specifically. So I won't review that all here, but I just wanted to highlight that some things that we're looking at is how we want to contribute or connect with these Aquarius energies, but where we're doing so from a place of strength confidence and understanding rather than from a sense of obligation. Now, Saturn is connected to our consequences and our karma, meaning Saturn will bring up energies that have been unresolved from other lifetimes. Saturn will also show us our power in these connections, in these choices. Saturn will also show us what we can do about it in the present moment that may be different, that may put you on a new path, that may shift the trajectory of where you're going, as well as 
who you want to go forward with, meaning if there are new people you want to meet or interact with versus those that you've outgrown. And because Aquarius is about groups, you could be looking at your own associations, your own connections to other people, whether that is through online groups or online networks and tribes, online or in-person hobbies. Uh, This is where we take our energy out and look at who we're connected with and why. So you could have some deeper inquiries here into why am I a part of this group? Why am I working with these people? Why am I going here? Why am I showing up there? And you could be questioning that for yourself to really dig into if it's your authentic energy, if it's really in alignment with your future direction, or if it's something you've been stuck with, obligated to, if there's a heaviness or a burden that is emerging because it's not in alignment with your energy. And as we reconsider these at a more profound level, we reconsider these questions, there's things that shift where we say, you know, I think I'm done with interacting with this group, or I don't think I have much time anymore to be a part of this book club or this PTA experience. There's things that we reassess about how we're using our time and energy and the people we are connecting with or giving that to. So this could be a five-month period where you're understanding what you no longer want on your calendar. You're just kind of done with it. It's not bringing you what you thought you needed anymore. You've shifted, you've grown, you've changed. Maybe you're opening up to new tribe members, new friendships, new acquaintances. Aquarius is also our colleagues, those we interact with for a joint purpose or because we're on a similar path. Aquarius is also the energy of the people we spend time with. Because there is something in common, whether that is a passion, a hobby, a project, an idea, there's something that unites you with those individuals. And you could experience people falling away, saying no thank you. You could also be the one who does that. So understand that this will show up in multiple ways, but that there's a theme right now that ultimately is bringing people back into their authentic energy. And depending on their level of consciousness and depending on how they are responsible with their energy, you could have a lot of clarity during this retrograde phase. You could have a sense of looking at what you haven't honored in yourself, what you haven't fully heard. Maybe your energy was pulled outside of you because of Saturn in Aquarius commitments. Maybe there's so many things you've had to do for others, so many things you've had to take care of. Maybe you're the responsible one, the mature one, you're in charge. Maybe you're working with others who are in that position and you're seeing how their energy feels heavier or they're under a lot of obligations and they need a break. The Saturn retrograde is going to pull us back into ourselves and this is when we definitely hear with clarity more of who we are, what we need, and how to stand strong in that. So again, that's where we start to have these no's. No, thank you. I'm not sure I can do that anymore. I need to reevaluate this or I need to shift this so that it does fit in with what I can handle. And this is where things get reworked. And because Saturn is very practical, Saturn is very much about how is this going to show up? This is where things change in our commitments, in our work, in our obligations, and in our priorities, so that if it was too much, Saturn helps you, again, to establish the boundaries and say no, but to find a new solution that will work. And that could be part of this redirect during Saturn retrograde, where now you're understanding what is in front of you or what you want to do. You're understanding, well, this is where I want to go. So why am I headed way over here when it's taking me off course or off the path of what I really want or what really matters to me? So this is part of that redirect here that we can work with. And when you come from that intention, it can make it much easier to communicate with others, your new choices, your new decisions, what you 
don't want to say yes to because you're coming from that authentic place. And people feel that. They feel the authenticity. They feel when something is genuine. They feel when you have had thoughtful consideration around something and you've come to a new understanding or a new clarity point. So this is where, again, people are going to be understanding more of what they need, maybe where they bit off more than they could chew, maybe where there's too much in front of them. So this is a really beautiful time to get right with yourself, get truer with yourself, come into that part of you that only you know and allow Saturn to strengthen it, to build you up, to strengthen your backbone or perhaps do something even energetically that supports the intention of standing on your own in whatever that looks like for you and however that shows up for you. Saturn is connected to the physical body's bone skeletal system. So it's connected to our spine and where we need to strengthen our energetic spine without feeling like or taking on too much or more than what's really your own responsibility. And this could be something that you need to communicate, announce, or share with others around a change of plans, change of direction, understanding that one thing isn't working and you're refocusing over here, you're reprioritizing. And again, this energy is going to show up wherever you have 18 to 25 degrees of Aquarius in your natal chart. And also understand that because Saturn takes two to three years to move through each astrological sign, Saturn hasn't been in this part of your astrology chart since the early 90s. Specifically, it was early 1991 until early 1994 that Saturn was last in this part of your astrology chart. And I know that having that understanding can help with looking at what you're restructuring and reprioritizing over perhaps the past 30 years or so, where maybe you're making some bigger life changes. You're ready to move forward. You're ready to make some new choices and to start something that is in more direct alignment with who you are now. And of course, the Saturn in Aquarius is going to be different for everybody. So I'm talking about this in the general themes and in the bigger picture, but it could be even more significant for you if you have planets or points in Aquarius. And if you have your Saturn in Aquarius, which would be showing you what your Saturn return energies are about at this time. And Saturn brings up serious choice points, things that you have to be clear about, make decisions about, honestly assess in your life. And the first course of action is often to say no. There's often a removal, something has to go, something is expired or no longer needed, and then that allows the energy to clear out where Saturn can then rebuild and bring in that new goal, that new desired result, something that matters to you next. And this can often be a big deal because of the seriousness and maturity associated with Saturn, where you could be needing to change some things in your life and you know people aren't going to be happy. You know that other people are going to be upset or disappointed or feel challenged. And if you are an empath, you're a light worker, you're energetically sensitive, you feel that even more. And that can make it more of a struggle to make a decision because you understand the ripple effect or you understand how it will affect others. And then you can feel that responsibility of how they're going to experience this decision. And that is something that we often take very seriously and we're aware of. So part of this Saturn retro grade is bringing you back into yourself and asking you to claim responsibility for your own energy and to remind yourself what you're responsible for and what you are not, what you are not responsible for. Because everyone is on their own sovereign path. Everyone has their own soul's journey in this lifetime. Everyone has their own power, their own choices, their own light, their own energy. Maybe they're disconnected from it. Maybe they aren't aware of it. Whatever that might be for them. Again, it's very individual. But so much of this energy is coming back into you claiming responsibility for your energy and who you are, what you want, what matters to you in this life, what your priorities right now are, honoring that, understanding that, being in the strength and confidence of that while allowing others to do the same. And you could even see this as an energetic gift. 
an energetic gift of sovereignty, an energetic gift of boundaries. So if there are things that you're changing in yourself, in your life, in your world, in your choices, this is where you could establish it energetically as a gift to others, that this is designed for the best and highest good of all. And then that opens up the energy potentially for others to also make the best decisions for themselves, to claim responsibility for their own energies, and to look at where there can be any unconscious habits of over-reliance on others, overdoing, over-providing for others, and looking at where those new boundaries need to be established so that there isn't that cross-contamination. Saturn doesn't want that. Saturn wants healthy fences between neighbors. And in fact, I'm just making the connection right now that last week in my yard, I had to pull down and trim these vines that were coming over my fence from the neighbor behind my house. And all these vines were creeping over and I really didn't care much about it. It wasn't a priority. And then all of a sudden, it really bothered me. All of a sudden, I'm like, I don't want those heavy vines pulling on my fence, potentially collapsing the fence, requiring a new fence. So I'm going to take care of it right now. So I got out my pruning shears and went to work pulling all these vines off of the fence. And when I did that to establish that clearer boundary, it lightened up the space. It was much clearer. It felt like there was a beautiful purity that came in. And my practical nature was, well, now I don't have to rebuild a fence anytime soon. Have you seen the price of wood these days? And it's a really big fence. I have a really big yard. So it was potentially how this vine could collapse a huge energetic boundary. And I was saying, nope, we're not going to do that. So this is where you could be looking in your life at where boundaries have been breached. And that doesn't mean it's necessarily bad or negative, but this is a reestablishment here of what does the energy need? What does the space need that supports the strength of those boundaries? You may notice something for the first time. You may notice something that feels like it crosses a boundary. You may notice something that hasn't been sitting with you well, and now you're like, oh, I think I understand what's going on here. Saturn retrograde is going to support you in reviewing and understanding these energies in your life and in your environment. And Saturn retrograde is going to support you in strengthening up anything that needs to be strengthened. So if you own this powerfully, if you're open to saying yes to this part of yourself that is ready to be clearer, stronger, and more aware of your boundaries, you're going to have some ways of working through the Saturn retrograde energy that further supports what you need to communicate, energetically shift or change, what you need to honor, and how you can do so in a responsible, mature manner. Now, I also feel like this energy of Saturn in Aquarius, especially retrograde, brings in, almost energetically magnetizes more to us from other lifetimes, other things that we have unresolved, other things that we have not fully completed or upheld that requires our attention. So this means that Saturn retrograde in Aquarius can bring forth more karmic energies and unresolved soul contracts for you to look at and to assess. What do I want to do with this? What is clear for me around this? What is the best next step here for this karmic energy, for this soul contract? Maybe it's a person. Maybe it's a workplace. Maybe it's a group you're connected to, such as a civic group, a community group, a group of friends. Saturn in Aquarius brings up what we have previously committed to, And now we can assess if it's still true or not. And again, I do feel this as bringing up energies from other lifetimes, other connections, and you could be understanding what is complete for you, what is done for you, what no longer has energy, what no longer is of interest, what no longer resonates. And of course, understanding that this is where you have the ability to stand in your mastery to stand in the strength of what your soul needs, of what your soul has been learning. And sometimes we have these lessons that are about saying no. 
People come into your life so you can practice and strengthen your ability in establishing a boundary. People come into your world and they're meant to be some type of trigger or opportunity. They are an opportunity for you to say no and that's their main purpose in your life. That's it. You're not meant to say yes. You're not meant to put more into that relationship or that friendship or that experience. You're meant to say no. And that is the karma or that is the soul contract. That's where you're standing in the strength of your own energy. So this is where something could be coming forward for you to reassess and reconsider because if you didn't say no the first time because it wasn't right or it wasn't the right time, and there's no judgment here, by the way, because there's things that we're meant to move through. We're meant to have an experience of something or someone or some place. We're meant to have that experience and to understand it. Then we're meant to carefully and realistically assess if it's connected to your truth, to your future, to your individual needs and what you want to truly step into around it. So know that we have many, many dynamics at play here. But if you can understand that Saturn wants you to strengthen and really be in a sense of self that's solid and true, it can help you understand that we have all these different energies playing with us working with us expanding us and Saturn says, okay, now let's put some boundaries up. Let's retract. Let's understand that saying no is just as powerful as saying yes, because when it's coming from that beautifully intentioned place of honoring your own energy and your own needs, you are potentially establishing more of a win-win scenario for everyone involved. So consider this. Consider if you said yes to a job. You previously said yes, you needed the money, you needed the paycheck, it was in your wheelhouse, it was something you'd be good at. You said yes. Now a few months have passed, you've been in the job, you've been moving through it, and you've come to see that it's not what you thought it would be. It's not really harnessing your skills, it's not really what you want, it's not truly what you thought it would be, and now you're in this position of saying, you know, for all the ways I thought this would be a good job match for me, I'm seeing that it's really not, and I'm ready for something else that's better, something else that's truer for me, something else perhaps that fits the job description that you're really seeking. And it could be that depending on how you feel and how your energy works, you could have a sense of guilt. You could have a sense of maybe I wasn't really listening to myself or why did I say yes to this or I don't want to say no because when you do get hired, you know, a company may have invested in you. They invested energy in training you and resources and you get to that point where you realize this isn't a good fit, but I feel guilty saying no. I feel guilty quitting or leaving. But when you take this energy and you raise it up, and you take it to a higher perspective. There's things that you learned through the position, through the training, through perhaps the connections or the people you met that you were meant to experience. And there's something here that's now speaking to you louder about your truth, your authenticity, what you really want, and you're ready to change paths or redirect into a new job. And from that higher perspective, this is all perfect. What if you had karma? with someone in that workplace that you closed out through only three months on the job? What if you had something unresolved energetically with that company or with that industry? What if there's something that you just needed to finish up and take care of that maybe stemmed from other lifetimes? What if that particular environment was a recreation of another professional environment from another lifetime, another timeline, and you came back in to fulfill some duties, to show up, to take care of some things, but it was only needed for a short span of time where you were essentially completing the karma or the unresolved energy. You were maybe taking on something that you had to finish up. Again, maybe there was consequences from something you experienced in a previous lifetime. And in this role, you took responsibility for whatever those consequences might be. You know, what I'm getting at is that there's probably a fuller story here. It's beyond just how long this particular job is on your resume. There could have been something here that you needed to close out. And because everything is energy, we can forget that at times, that you were brought into this role, into this job, you had to close it out. Now, 
This could be applied to anything in your life, of course. This can be something that is internal. It doesn't necessarily have to be something in the physical world or with other people, but there could be something here that you needed to energetically go through and experience in order for you to more consciously evaluate it and understand if it's something you want to do going forward. And then if you're realizing that there are things in your life that you're not meant to take forward or that no longer speak to you or no longer are correct for you, This is where Saturn is going to give you the strength to communicate and understand that as well as feel strong in the decisions you're making next. And this retrograde phase is going to give you an opportunity to tune into what that truth is, what you need to say, and how you're ready to honor your energy now. Now, because Saturn is very realistic, there could be something here where you're like, well, I know I need to stay with this job for the paycheck for a few more months at least, but during the retrograde, I'm going to look at other opportunities, other potentials, other things that are in a better fit for me and take my energy in that direction where then you're opening up the energy to move towards something that is a better fit for you, even if you have to take care of something every day because of what it provides for your real life experience, such as the paycheck. And Saturn is about our real world responsibilities. So we could feel like there's these big things we're reassessing that we've been responsible for, And we're understanding that I don't need that in my life. That's no longer true for me. And you're also doing it from a place of honoring other people. So then going back to this example of understanding it's time to leave a job, that could be beautifully on time where when you leave that position, it opens it up for someone else to come in and manifest their job, manifest their dream. Maybe the position you leave is somebody else's dream come true. And you can establish that energy for anywhere you're saying no. Okay. You can call in that energy of this is for the best and highest good of all, where I'm needed to say no, where I'm needed to pull back, where I'm needed to move or change directions. I believe this is where it's going to open up something that is for the best and highest good of all whatever that looks like on whatever timeline that might be, but that is my driving intention. And that alone can give you more strength and confidence in any changes you're making. And it also pulls in the miracles and power of the universe where you're operating from that higher consciousness of how the universe is supporting you in these reassessments. The universe is supporting you in what you're reevaluating. It's coming through for a reason. Something is coming up for a reason. You're receiving a message or a download for a reason. You're putting the pieces together for a reason. And that's also part of Aquarius. Aquarius is a giant puzzle with all these different puzzle pieces. And it's how we bring it together. But it's in motion, right? That's how the universe works. These pieces are in motion and they shift and they change. So even though it could feel like there's things changing within you and within your real world, it's all part of this beautiful cosmic puzzle that's meant to evolve. When we raise our consciousness, things change. When we understand more of who we are, things change. When we understand more of our purpose or our mission or what we're passionate about, things change. And so when you're honoring it, when you're really in that place of powerful sovereignty, that this is happening for the best and highest good of all, you are co-creating with the universe. You are bringing in the magic of miracles and new potentials. And you're working with the power of these boundaries and these commitments at a whole new level. And that might be one of your big areas of soul growth in this lifetime, because that's also Saturn. Saturn is showing you in real time, in real world experiences, what is needed in your life, what is needed in your journey, where it's okay to make necessary changes. Those changes are connected to divine timing, which is what astrology is. Astrology is very much about divine timing and working with the cycles of these energies. And Saturn is showing you that you have responsibility to yourself, but you can also honor and respect others' energies, others' choices, others' decisions, but to not let that take away from who you are, 
to not let that energy weaken you or feel discouraged around it or assume that you are more responsible for others than they're responsible for themselves. And I'm referencing that because of the Aquarian energies of other people. So during this retrograde period, you could have some understandings of where you're not responsible anymore. You don't need to take it on. You don't need to carry the weight. You don't need to hold it all. And that maybe that's what you're giving back to others through the boundaries or through the reassessment of what's working and what's not working, which is also a strong Saturn retrograde theme. We see what's no longer working, but we feel it through our energetic depletion or our stress or the burdens we're carrying. And then we're given this period of time over these five months to make new practical choices, to understand what needs to go, what needs to stay, to restructure, rebuild, reconfigure, so that what you are committed to is deeply true for you. And it is something that only you can know. And that's also part of the Saturn journey. It's very personal. You're meant to walk alone at times. There's things we're meant to do only within our own energy fields. And that could be part of this retraction. You're pulling the energy back in and really giving yourself some time and space to process, reconsider, reevaluate, but also deeply honor who you are and deeply honor that because it's true for you, it's going to ultimately be good for others too. This is a belief system. This is something you can certainly invest in and subscribe to if it resonates. But I feel like this is also how the universe works, where even if something is a no in the present moment, it could lead to an even better yes somewhere down the line. And Saturn doesn't always deliver immediately, but Saturn sets you up for what is best for you to help you move forward in the most perfect way. But again, that's something only you can know, and that's what you're responsible for. So personal responsibility over our sovereign energy is the name of the game here with the Saturn retrograde in Aquarius. And it requires a new level of maturity within us. But this is a spiritual maturity. This is an understanding Understanding that just as you are beautifully guided, protected, and becoming more self aware, that can be an energy that others are also connected to, too. So know that the universe connects to all of us. The universe works with all of us, depending on our own free will, how we interact with the universe as well. But understand too, that so much of the Saturn retrograde just wants you to strengthen your energy source and strengthen what it means to be your energy in this lifetime. So we will keep talking about this as we progress forward over the next number of months. Remember, Saturn is retrograde until October 23rd, and it will voyage back to 18 degrees of Aquarius. Having a heads up about this energy, especially in your own chart, can help you see what you're reprioritizing, where you're saying no, where you're cutting back, where you're retracting, and ultimately where you're becoming in higher alignment with what is essential on your path going forward. So as always, thank you so much for joining me for this podcast. I'll be back every Monday and Wednesday for a new episode. You can find out more about me over at mollymccord.online where I offer a variety of online courses and programs as well as business development support for those of you who are building your online business. And please be sure to check out my previous podcast episodes on Saturn in Aquarius as these may give you further insights into what this Saturn retrograde is bringing to your attention as well. So I will see you back here very soon, wishing you a beautiful day ahead wherever you are in the world. And I look forward to connecting with you through our next astrological journey together.